Well, we are so happy to be here with you tonight and want to welcome you all out to Utah Valley University. Is that going to stay? Okay. Um, welcome to Utah Valley University as we discuss this wonderfully important topic, strengthening women. Um, we want to start by thanking Dr. Susan Madsen. She's thanked everyone else, but we want to thank her. Yes. And, and her staff for all the hard work that they put into organizing these wonderful events. Um, Matt and I are convinced that one of the best ways to strengthen the impact of women is to make sure that women get a good education. And so we'd like to share a few thoughts with you tonight about this topic, which is very near and dear to our hearts. Now, as we do so, I know what my role is here tonight. <laughs> and it relates to what my relationship is like with Paige. So one thing you need to know is that when she says jump, I say how high. <laughs> uh, that's how it's worked from the beginning. That's how it'll work tonight. I will just stand here and speak when I'm supposed to, and only then. Yeah, he, he is pretty good, ladies, but uh, he doesn't jump quite as high these days as he did back when that photo was taken. He, he's still pretty good, though. Um, I wanted to start this evening with a slide from uh, Maya Angelou. When you know better, you do better. And I, I love this statement for two reasons. First of all, the greatest key to knowing better is education. And secondly, what we want to convey tonight is that by getting a college education, whatever it is you women choose to do with your lives, you'll do it better if you have a college degree. It really is such an exciting time to be a woman. There are more opportunities and more support now than ever before to help us pursue our dreams. And um, today, women can make so many decisions. Lots of different op options and opportunities are out there. Um, you can choose to become a doctor or a businesswoman or a teacher or get married and be home with your, your children. But whatever it is you choose to do, I know that you'll do it better if you have a better education. You'll better be able to fulfill that, the choices you make and to, um, and to reach your full potential with an education. Um, let's see what slide we've got there. Okay. As a way to kind of illustrate this point tonight, Matt and I wanted to share some personal experiences with, that we've had from our lives with you, and also maybe a few research findings that make it very clear that it's more vital than ever for women to pursue an education. I feel very fortunate to have come from a line of women who understood the importance of education. My mother, that's a picture of her in the middle, she was a school teacher who taught grade school for 27 years. My grandma June went to college in the 1920s when most women didn't go to college. And she said that she did it because her dad always said to her, the best gift that you can give to yourself is to get a good education. So she went on to teach elementary school for many years um, as well. And my other grandma, Grandma Beth, she's in the far picture, my dad's mother, she didn't really have a chance to get a formal education, but she loved learning so much that she became a self-taught librarian and she worked at the Sandy City Library for many, many years. Well, with a line of women who all took books and learning so seriously, how could I be named anything other than Paige, <laughs> right? So um, just to make sure that no one got too carried away with the metaphor, my mother insisted on inserting an I and so I am Paige, P-A-I-G-E, and that, that really is a true story, so. <laughs> um, I was blessed with a mother who took time to read to me every day, and she would weekly take me to the library um, and did that for years, and maybe you had a mother like that who read to you regularly, or maybe you didn't, but we can all learn as women to do our part to read to children and inspire the next generation. Because I was read to as a child, Books became really fun and exciting and a kind of a habit for me. Um, some of my favorite books were The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein, which is a story of unconditional love and giving that touches my heart and still makes me cry when I read it. 
And another favorite was Charlotte's Web, which taught me about the power of true friendship. And I have such fond memories of reading with my mother when I was young, and I know that it really did have a big, education, a, a big impact on my education and my life. You know, I've, I've heard Paige uh, talk about this uh, publicly a number of times, and every time she does it, it reminds me of my experience, too. So uh, I pay great tribute to my mother. Uh, many of you uh, know my father, uh, and uh, he's uh, well noted for his own educational background, a Yale PhD, a university president himself. And I love my father, and I'm very grateful to him. But the fact of the matter is, I really owe a greater share of my own educational development to my mother. And she was the one who really uh, got me reading as a young uh, man and introduced me to books and took me to the library and shepherded me through those important formative years. Uh, and, um, and I've always been touched, too, by uh, by both my parents' commitment uh, to education and reading. So I, I had favorite child books, uh, Fish Out of Water. You can tell I'm not as deep as Paige is. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but eventually it came a little bit later. So uh, the, the, the book on the left is a Random House Step Up book series. And when my parents were in graduate school and didn't have hardly any money at all, uh, not even enough money for a bed, I slept on a camp cot as a four and five year old. But somehow, there was always money for books. And they bought me this series of books. And you can see, it's, it's a little hard to see on that, on that uh, picture, but the binding is taped together. I read it so many times, the binding kind of came off and it was taped together. I still have that book, it sits in my office. I went on to become a professional PhD student of Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and the great early thinkers of American political thought. And I owe so much of it to my parents and especially uh, to my mother and her commitments and her values as a teacher and a conveyor of the importance of, of reading good books. Um, there are so many benefits that come from childhood reading and we're gonna go through just a few here. Um, childhood reading leads to improved relationships with parents and I know I felt that way about my mom. It was a special time for us to sit and read together. Um, leads to improved speech skills, ability to process information, communication skills, logical thinking skills, concentration and behavior, improved understanding of emotions, improved ability to encounter new experiences. And, and what a gift that is to children, all of these benefits that come from, from taking the time to read with them. And most importantly, reading helps children to see that education can be fun. And that is certainly how I felt when I began school as a little kindergartner. There's a picture of me, lovely little photo with my yarn bows. Um, but, but it was, it prepared me so well for school and made school exciting and a fun place to be. Neither Paige nor her mother would want me to point out that Paige has always been a little bit irritated that her mother didn't pick barrettes that matched. <laughs> so, my OCD. Okay. So, uh, so one of our messages today is to uh, women, young and old, to in your homes and in your families, to create this culture of reading. It starts early. And uh, so if you weren't read to as a child, don't uh, think you know, all is lost, but be committed to breaking that cycle and, and making sure that you do that uh, for the next generation and making that uh, prominent. But that's obviously just the start, and, and mostly what we want to talk about uh, today or tonight is the importance of higher education. And there are lots of things that we could talk about here. Uh, we just want to, again, share a few statistics. A lot of this comes from the research of Dr. Madsen. Some of it's from our own experience and personal observation. But just think about the different areas of life that go better in your life because you'll have a college education. So it's that spirit of, you know, by knowing better, you can do better. Uh, it, it starts with something, and, and I'm starting here, not because it's the most important. In fact, I don't think it's the most important, but it is important at some level. Uh, and it's this, this power of, uh, of higher earning. 
So look, look at the first part of that slide and the statistics uh, about if, if for any reason you are now a single mother or you, you end up in life as a single mother, and that does happen, uh, there's a 50% chance that you will live in poverty if you're a single mother and all you have is a high school degree. And yet, if you've gone ahead and gotten a college degree, the chances of you living in poverty, even as a single mother, go down to 13%. That's a dramatic change of independence and ability simply because you have that college degree. So that's one thing that's especially relevant for women who sometimes find themselves in that situation. But in general, look at what happens to the earning power in general for someone who has a college degree, an average of $24,000 or more for a year in your earning power over a lifetime. That's a million dollar difference uh, in your lifetime that you will make simply because you, you got a, a college degree. And um, as a result, it's not just the money, okay? You'll have more options. And, and one of the things that's important to women in particular, uh, and sometimes it's because of children, but sometimes it's just other reasons, you have more flexibility. You can be a little choosier about the job that you have and what you do. Uh, you'll gain better access to, to better health care options. Uh, you've, you've got more protection against unemployment and you're just basically better prepared in general for self-support if you need that. And that all comes about because you'll have gotten uh, a college degree. Another very important improved um, benefit from being college educated is an improved family life. Women with a college education are less likely to enter into an abusive relationship they are less likely to be manipulated by men. They are less likely to allow their children to be abused. Um, they have more confidence and they, they have better uh, self-esteem and judgment when it comes to these things. Also, when it comes to parenting, the more educated a mother is, the more likely she is to marry and stay married, to give birth to healthier babies, to spend more time reacting to her children, to prepare children academically for school, to have children who participate in extracurricular activities, and to have more college-educated children who can better provide for self and families. So uh, in addition to earning more and, uh, and uh, uh, being advantaged in the way that, that Paige has been talking about here, your physical health uh, is, is improved, uh, the research shows. Again, because you've gotten better educated. So, You'll tend to live longer. Uh, you'll have an overall healthier lifestyle. Uh, you'll have fewer weight issues, uh, increased life satisfaction, decreased uh, tendencies to sort of mental health problems. Now, again, we don't mean to suggest that higher education is some silver bullet, some magic you know, wand that's going to solve all problems. But it, it does reduce the tendency to some of these issues that, that so many people face in society. So it's, it's just a wonderful thing to arm yourself with an, a degree for some of these physical issues uh, as well. And findings show that college graduates are more likely to be involved in civic and community um, projects. They're more likely to volunteer their time in important community projects. They're more likely to vote, to be engaged in elections, and to support democracy. They're more likely to donate blood, which is so needed in our community and our hospitals. More likely to give to charities, accomplishing so much good to so many who are in need. So as an old political scientist, I, I love th these findings about what a difference this can make in the world that we live in together, simply by virtue of more people going on and getting degrees. And then finally, Literally, your, your, your brain changes. I mean, there's a lot of research now on the plasticity of the brain, that the, the way your neurons operate will, will literally change by virtue of going to school and going through the exercises associated with school and the cognitive functions that change the way they operate. So uh, you'll be able to be uh, uh, better at critical thinking and creative activities. You'll be better at decision-making skills the ability to integrate ideas. I mean, we live in a very complex world right now. And one of the things that's critical out in the workforce are people who can take 
random, different, and sophisticated ideas and bring them together creatively for new ideas and innovation. And that's really hard to do if you haven't had some of the training that comes with a college degree. Uh, to say nothing of uh, you know, some of these other skills that go beyond that, some of the soft skills, interpersonal skills, how you forge relationships, your ability to operate in a team. And then, of course, all the great communication skills, writing and verbal skills uh, are, are things that just get better and better uh, with each year that you're in school that way. And so that's why Paige and I are really concerned about the data that we see here. So as you can see here, in uh, most of the US, we have a problem. And the problem is that not enough men go to college. And if I were a president outside of Utah at some other state, I would be on this like everything. Uh, this is a big issue that we don't have enough men going to college. Uh, but uh, in Utah in general, it may be you know, half and half when you look at it in total, but certainly at UVU and a number of other institutions, we don't have enough young women uh, in our area coming to college. So I may be preaching to the choir tonight, uh, but uh, if I am, you can join me in getting this word out that we need to have more young women coming here, pursuing degrees, completing degrees, and finishing them. And as a result, uh, we've worked together to, to try to create a number of initiatives to make it easier for women to pursue degrees. Uh, and Paige has been a wonderful partner for me on some of those things. So one of the ways that we've tried to support women here on our campus at Utah Valley University is with our We Care Center, which is a, a wonderful place that provides low cost daycare for students that are in need. Uh, male students can use this as well as female students, but we do know that child rearing duties often make it a little more challenging for women to complete their degrees. So we've already seen the, the wonderful benefits of the We Care Center and what a huge difference it's making in helping our female students go to college and, and finish their degrees. One of the other messages that we're trying to get out and, and that I would really stress to any young women in the audience today is that uh, it's not just coming to college that we want to stress. We also want to, we want young women to be more aware of opportunities within what we call the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, math. These are disciplines that historically have been heavily dominated by men, uh, but we need more women to go into these areas. And the fact of the matter is there are lots of great opportunities for women to do things uh, within these fields. And so uh, we've started uh, young, we've been participating in a robotics uh, challenge program at the elementary school level that has been, um, uh, pays a real attention to getting young women as early as elementary school aware of that these are, these are disciplines that they can compete in, that they can do. Uh, just this last week, I had a very successful uh, another event called She Tech, where we invite uh, high school, uh, junior high, uh, moving into high school uh, uh, female students to come. We had over 1,200 st students in our UCCU uh, event center, and they come for a day of hands-on activities and learning, again, showing them they can do this. It's exciting. It's fun. If you've missed some of these things but want to get involved, just know, again, that we're here to help you with that and show you that there's lots of things that you could uh, get involved with here that lead to wonderful uh, opportunities that way. Um, one of the early projects that Matt and I worked on together here at UVU was to develop a Women's Success Center. Um, we worked with some great leaders on campus like Vice President Michelle Taylor, Michelle's here with us tonight, and Dr. Susan Madsen, of course, and also Peggy Passon had a huge, played a huge role in this, um, to develop this center, which is a huge support for our female students. And it's run also by a wonderful director, Ann Weyra Poe does a wonderful job um, in running the center. But we, um, we developed this to help any woman trying to find her way to college and complete her degree and pursue her dreams. And it is a wonderful, I call it the gem of campus because it does so much to, to help women through whatever obstacle might be um, in her way or whatever she might be facing that's causing her to feel like she can't finish college or she can't pass a class or, or whatever um, is, is causing her stress, the Women's Success Center is there to help and lend support. Um, so today, thanks to 
the support of community, many people in the community, like my good friend Janice Lindley at doTERRA, who is pictured here with me, and many, many others. We have scholarships, we have mentors, special lectures, and other programs specifically designed to help women succeed here at UVU and beyond. Um, there's an old proverb that says, educate a boy and you educate an individual. Educate a woman and you educate a community. Education really does have that ripple effect within a woman's life and upon all those that she comes in contact with. And we sincerely hope that every woman here tonight will be committed to, make, to making education important in her life and in the lives of the people around her. So as we close tonight, uh, let us just say this, uh, that as wonderful as all this sounds, we know that sometimes it's not easy, uh, that education, there's expense, there's time, there are things that uh, become obstacles to completing degrees, uh, and some of you may be facing that right now. Some of you may be seeing that looming ahead. Others of you may be looking back saying, yes, I, I couldn't finish. And so we, we understand that. And that's why we're doing everything we know how to do to help women overcome these obstacles and finish their degrees. But in addition to that, we just want to say, don't give up. You just keep going because this is part and parcel of a larger effort, which is the fuller spirit, I think, of our, uh, of our gathering tonight, which is not just about education, but it's about strengthening the impact of women. We need the power of women in our families, in our educational institutions, in our civic associations, in our companies, in our democracy. We need your voice. We need your influence. Education is a critical way to do that, but there are other things that you can do. You'll learn about tonight in the breakout ses sessions but as you do so, and you face those inevitable challenges, just keep going. And so we opened with Maya Angelou. We'll conclude with some poetry from her. You may encounter defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. That's our hope and wish for you. We're glad to, have, to be here to help you do it at Utah Valley University. Thank you very much.